Scripture reading, taken from Psalm 34 verse 1 to 18. I will bless the Lord at all times, His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord, let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt His name together. I sought the Lord, and He answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to Him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O children, listen to me, I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and loves many days, that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At all times I will bless Him. His praise will be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. The humble man will hear of it. The afflicted will be glad. And join with me to magnify the
I sought the Lord, He heard me, He delivered me from my fear. Praises magnify the Lord. We sing His praises, magnify the Lord. Let us pray. And now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts, Lord, be acceptable and pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Psalm 34, verses 1 to 18. This is what I'm going to share this morning. Psalm 34, verse 1 to verse 18 is a very, very beautiful psalm that speaks of the uh, furious love of God, the lavish goodness of God, and about His unlimited care for each one of us in our times of difficulties, in our challenging times, in our times of trouble. David wrote this psalm during one of his most difficult and desperate time in his life. The time when he was fleeing from King Saul who tried to kill him because of jealousy. I was all out to kill him. And David ran to this place called Gath where he, find, he tried to find refuge there, but he found none. In 1 Samuel chapter 21, verses 10 to 15 tells us, David rose and fled that day from Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said to him, Is not, is not this David the king of the land? Did, he not, did, did they not sing to one another of him in dances? Saul has struck down his thousands, but David his ten thousands. And David took this word to heart and was very much afraid of the king of Gath. In order to escape from King Saul and to escape from uh, Achish the king, David took things in his own hand. He, he, he planned out something for himself. His plan was to escape from the king of Gath. Uh, some it is like us sometimes when we are in trouble. We, the first thing to do is that we try to plan something. We try to seek something on ourselves. David exactly, before seeking the Lord, he, he, in his mind, he, he just wanted to escape from Saul. And he did something really, really ridiculous. Right? He did something that's not right. He pretended to be insane. He pretended to be a madman in front of Abimelech, the king of Gath, which led to his release. In 1 Samuel 21, verse 13 to verse 15 tells us, So David changed his behavior when he realized that the king is about to kill him. David changed, 1 Samuel 21, verse 13 says, David changed his behavior, his behavior, his behavior before them and pretended to be insane in their hands and made marks on the doors of the gate and let his spittle round down his spirit. I want you to imagine that time where David, right David, he pretended to be bad and his behavior was very, very weird. How disgusting he was to, to the extent that he disguised, pretend to be sick. And the scriptures tell us he pretended to be insane in their hands and made marks on the doors. That means he scribbled things on the door. For those, maybe not all of us here, when I was working in IMH, uh, when patients are not themselves, they would really be very, very violent and they would scrap the door and everything. So David was in this desperate situation that he pretended to be mad and uh, he was uh, pretending to be mad in their hands. He made marks on the doors of the gate and let his spittle run down his beard. It's a scary sight when you look at David he scraped things on the wall and his spittle was all foaming down his lips. 
uh, sliver, so-called sliver, came out from his mouth. Dripple. I want you to imagine how David becomes in this situation, how he looks like. Dribble down from his, from his mouth. Uh, drooling. Actually, drooling in an adult is usually associated with some infection or nervous system disorder. So David planned in the way that he spilled, he spilled them, spilled out, drilling from his mouth. David, a handsome young man, was spilled, drilling from his mouth. It is said that when, when, when an adult, not baby, baby drill, but when an adult drills, it means that something wrong with a person. Either he suffered from certain infection of the body or he is having some um, nervous system disorder. So David behaved that way in front of the Abimelech, the king of Gath. So he was really, really downcast and he was really just beyond recognition. So if you could imagine the people around him saw him spill the coming, spill the coming down from his lips and he was very, very disgusting. And the king of Gath, then Akish, said to his servants, Behold, you see the man that is mad. Why then have you brought him to me? Do I, do I like mad men in my kingdom that you have to brought this fellow to behave as such a mad man in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? And because of that, he was released. Uh, Abimelech released him and he was free. David used his own plan in order to escape. I believe many of us sometimes are like David when we are in trouble, when we have certain things, very challenging time, we take things in our hand rather than we uh, seek God. I believe David, if he could have seek God earlier, he wouldn't have behaved such way. God could have delivered him. But he was desperate. He took things in his hand. He pretended to be mad and was really, really disgusting to see him this way. I think I'm Maybe you could help me to press rather than this. Psalm 34 also reflects David's praise. In this psalm, you can see how David praised God, his thanksgiving, and his gratitude for God's deliverance and protection during his most challenging times in his life. And I think we can learn so much from David in this short psalm. How to praise how to praise God when we are facing real challenging time, when we are really down. How to praise God, how to give thanks to God, and how to worship God even when we are facing really challenging times or even when we are facing a storm. I don't know what you are facing this day, what kind of storm you are going through. Financial storm, difficulties, relation, broken relationship, as a storm in your life. Sickness storm, storm of depression, storm of hopelessness. God knows. One thing I know of is that you are not alone in your challenging time. God was with David and God is with us in our most challenging time. Whatever it is you are going through, I believe some of us are going through. I want to show you the next slide. The storm, the eagle, and the eagle in the storm. It is said that eagle in the storm, the eagle does not escape the storm. The eagle does not see him. It does not escape the storm. It simply uses the storm to lift it higher so that he can see the storm below him. So it's very, very unique of this bird the eagle, the eagle does not escape, try to escape from the storm. It's very scary to escape from the storm. But it simply used the situation, the storm the situation, to lift it higher. The next slide. When a storm is coming, all the other birds seek shelter. The eagle is the only one. The eagle alone avoids the storm by flying above it so that you can see what's happening. So this is my prayer for all of us here this morning, 
So in the storms of life, whatever you are facing now, right, may your heart soar like an eagle above the storm, not under it, not within the storm. Many of us want to quickly let the storm go by, but in the storm itself, the Lord is with us. We can rise above the storm, fly like an eagle, and seek the Lord's strength, not to siam, not to shelter. So remember, when the storm is coming, all other birds will seek shelter. The eagle, the only bird, the eagle alone avoid the storm. It avoid by flying above it so he can see what's happening below him. The next slide. Again, Psalm 34, verses 1 to 18. Uh, it's a psalm of, it's a psalm of encouragement, emphasizing on God's faithfulness God's care for his children and how responsive God is to those who seek him earnestly. The themes of how to trust, how to fear the Lord, the theme of God's provision are seen very clearly in these 18 verses, making it a source of encouragement, comfort and inspiration when we are facing difficulties. I just want to unpick, unpack for us this morning five, five simple encouragements from David in this psalm. How David encouraged us to do during our time of challenging time, during a difficult time. Five simple encouragements from David. The next slide. Okay, the five encouragements from David. Firstly, David, in his time of difficulties, right? He encouraged us to praise. He encouraged himself. He encouraged all of us to praise and worship God. And this can be found in verse 1 to verse 3. And he, uh, David also encouraged us to seek God's protection and deliverance. Verse 4 to verse 7. And he also encouraged, during times of difficulty, to have a deeper, deeper experience of God in our lives. Fourthly, encourage us to do something good even things are not that good in our life. And lastly, David encouraged us, which we, most of us know this very well. David encouraged us, whatever it is, always cry to the Lord. You know, there's one verse in Psalm says that, I pray to the Lord in the evening, in the noon, and in the, in the night. Three times a day, the psalmist cry to the Lord. And we can learn so much that during our difficult times, we can just cry to the Lord for help. The next slide. Okay, here is to the first <clears throat> encouragement that David wants us to do is to encourage us to praise and uh, to worship God in our difficult time. Verse 1 says, I will, bless, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. So you notice the words that is in red. Say, I will bless the Lord at all times. Many times we say the Lord bless us. But how are we going to bless the Lord? How do we bless the Lord? Anyone? How do we bless the Lord? The Lord bless us many times. We ask the Lord to bless us. But how can we bless the Lord? We can bless the Lord through our worship. And that's what He desires. Blessing the Lord is our worship to Him. It says, bless the Lord to our worship. Bless the Lord at all times. At all times. Secondly, firstly is to bless the Lord at times. Secondly, His praise, praising God, shall continually be in our mouth. Be in my mouth, David says. Praise shall continually be in my mouth. What does continually mean? Very often, at frequent interval, habitually praising the Lord, continually in my mouth. That means you can praise the Lord actually many times. Sometimes when we WhatsApp people, oh, something beautiful happened with PTL, 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 da, 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 PTL. But do we really mean it? Praising the Lord. 
Praising the Lord at all times. He said, continually be in my mouth. Habitually, make it habitually to praise God at all times. Without any intermission even. Unceasingly, always praise the Lord. So David, in the midst of his difficulties, he continued to bless the Lord. He continued to praise the Lord continually in his mouth. Secondly, verse 2, My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. What does to boast mean? In, in the scriptures, it's to boast. Uh, my soul boasts in the Lord. I believe when David says that he managed to, be, to speak proudly, he speak proudly of what the Lord has done to him, to show much satisfaction about someone or something. In this case, David shows his, his soul boasts in the sense he shows very, satis- very much satisfaction to someone that he loves. And thirdly, how to praise and worship? David encouraged us to magnify the Lord with me and exalt and let us exalt his name together. Magnify is to enlarge something. You know the magnifying glass, when we see something, we magnify it. It's a little thing, but magnify it. To, to, to magnify things becomes so big. To magnify is to tell how great, how awesome God is. In spite of what David did, he said, magnify the Lord with me. Together, uh, Mandarin said, Kwatang, make it very proud of the Lord and to speak it out. Praise the Lord that way. To exalt the Lord, in this verse, is to exalt the Lord, to raise God's power, to raise in rank, to glorify the Lord. Next slide. Number two, God, David encouraged us to seek God's protection and his deliverance. The verse, is, verse 4 says, I sought the Lord, and He delivered me, and He answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The word sought, S-O-U-G-H-T, it means what? It means to look for someone or something, especially for a long time. You seek the thing for a long time. And you, you seek it until you find it. So here David encouraged us to sought the Lord it means to continuously look to Him, especially for a long time, until we get something from Him. The, re- the result of seeking the Lord, the result of sought the Lord, can be found in verse 5, verse 6, and verse 7. It says here, those who look as you seek the Lord, as you sought the Lord, those who look to Him are radiant. Are radiant and their face shall never be ashamed. The poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of his troubles. As we seek the Lord, the Lord answer, and our face will be radiant, will be transformed, and the Lord will save us from all our troubles. And most important of all, as we seek the Lord, he will send his angels to encamp around us. Verse 7 is a beautiful verse. As we sought the Lord in our lives, somehow or other the Lord will let His angels encamp around those who fear Him. I want to share one testimony. It's not my testimony, but it's someone's testimony. Uh, this cu- last year, a couple of months, we had a, Carol and myself, we had the privilege to go under a teacher, a Pranakan teacher, a very elderly lady, 84 years old, she is the one who teaches us how to do the beading. You know, the potong manek manek shoe, the pranakan nyonya shoe, the small, small, bits, very small. Uh, we happened to know someone and someone recommended us to her. And she graciously took us in as her student to do the potong manek, very, very small bits in order to create a beautiful shoe. So many times, when we, every Thursday morning, we will go, Carol, my, this is one thing we enjoy as husband and wife after retirement, after Carol resigned from her work, we will see each other 24-7. So one thing that we really want to do is gather together, husband and wife, do something together. 
we enjoy going out to Makan. And then, this is one thing we really enjoy, doing the beating together. Each time, every Thursday when we go to her house in Marine Parade, uh, we will enjoy the whole day with her. She's from Christ Methodist Church, a very cute little small size Pranakan Nyonya lady. She taught us how to do it. And we enjoy it. Right? Each bead is so very small that we <laughs> have to take our glasses and to do it. But we enjoy it. This is a bonding time for us. But when we went to the house, she would tell us what she wants to eat. So we would cook all the Pranakan dishes for her and have lunch together. And she shares her testimony. One of the testimony that she shared with us was a very beautiful testimony on this. The angel of the Lord encamped around her. She dared not to share this testimony with many people because many people would say she crazy, she is crazy. Where have such thing ever happened? But it truly happened to her and because she knows that I'm a pastor and uh, she shared with us. She said once she was driving up to Malaysia, Malaysia, and uh, drove halfway, she uh, lost her control. Her car went into a slope. Lost her control, and then the car went down a slope. And being a small-sized lady, she didn't know what to do, and it was really out of nowhere. And then she, I think she prayed. And then later she saw four men, four strong men, came to the car, and each one of them, two in front, two behind, carried the car onto the road. Never heard of such thing, right? Even he used a fork to, it's just impossible. But she said that this four men wearing white carry, helped her to carry the car onto the road, and then they walked past by. She told me, Pastor Friday, this is really God's angel encamp around her, encamp around her. Something which is impossible because she sought the Lord, she seek the Lord, and the Lord delivered her, poor little nene, small size. The man carried the car. What can this be? It's truly the angel of the Lord and came around her when she needed. She sought the Lord and the Lord answered her. As I say, she did not share to the too many people because it's something very impossible. We had the privilege of uh, spending time with her. And each time after our, before we go back, we'll say a blessing upon her. And she enjoys it. She enjoys the food that we cooked. And uh, she, she will never tell us what she wants, but she will hint, oh, I like this prawns, nanas, uh, pineapple, thons, blah, blah. And then she said, chop chai. So we, okay, we cook. And we enjoy together. God is so good to us. Brought this Auntie Ivy, we call her, to our life for about three months plus. She passed on after three months. She passed on. And um, she's very encouraging, very, very sweet little lady. But these three months, God has brought her to us and God has brought us to her to listen to the testimony that she shared. Not only this four-person carriage, many times she really experienced God because she sought the Lord, she seek the Lord and the Lord's angel encamped around her. God does that to us. So David encouraged us to seek the Lord, knowing that seeking the Lord, the Lord answer us, He will deliver us, He will send His angels and camp around those who fear Him. The next slide. The third encouragement. David encouraged us to have a deeper experience of God, verses 8 to 10. He says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Here David is inviting all of us to experience God in a deeper sense. He said, come, come and taste. Taste that the Lord is good. Sharing is one thing, but you need to experience God's goodness in your life. So David is encouraging and encouraging all of us to come personally experienced as this Auntie Ivy experienced God's grace, God's mercy, God's protection upon her. I pray that we can also experience God's awesomeness in our life. David says in verse 9, Oh, fear the Lord, you his sin, 
for those who fear him lack, have no lack. Now, the word fear, we know that it's not scared, not, 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 not fearing God like what Adam and Eve are in the garden, fearing God and trying to hide. It's fearing his reverence, reverence God. Not to frighten of God, but reverence him. In the Old Testament, when the people want to approach God, they have to go, to, go through a lot of channels, so-called. The outer court, the holy place, then the holy of holies. And the holy of holies, only the high priest can enter once a year. But now we have the access to God. It says, fear the Lord. As we come to worship God each Sunday, are we coming with our, in, our, in our own way or do we have uh, come with a, 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 a a heart of fearing the Lord, of reverencing the Lord. Sometimes we come to worship just, just, just anyhow. Right? I'm very thankful to Vicar that even though he's in the camp, he makes sure that all of us here still come and worship while they are worshiping in Batam. But he makes sure that all of us are blessed by the Lord physically with a pastor, with a worship leader together. And it's so important. We do not worship God in our own way. As we want to come, we come. We don't want to come, we don't come. He says, fear the Lord, all you people. During the COVID year, online, it becomes very easy. We can honor computer anytime we want. And halfway, we can just pause it, and we can do whatever we want to do. And come back and pause it on. There's no reverence. We are not so strict that you have to be properly dressed, properly coming to the Lord. But here it says, fear the Lord. Respect Him. Online has its purpose, but it's already done. So now we come back, especially like today, while they're having camp, we are having our worship here. The Lord will bless as we fear Him come in reverence. A fear that inspires honors all awesomeness in us. A fear to know that, wow, hey, this is the God that we worship. So majestic, so magnificent. Our God is so powerful and we have the chance to come as a family, fearing Him, worshipping Him together. Fourthly, I'm going to end soon. Number four, encourage, we are encouraged by David to do good things even when things are not well. When things are not well, we just give up a lot of things. But here in verse 11 to verse 14, David teaches us, even in his most difficult time, he did not blame the king, he did not blame Saul, but he continued to do good to the people that hates him. And lastly, I'm going to close with this. Number five. David encouraged us to cry out to the Lord. Verse 15 says, The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears. The eyes of the Lord towards the righteous, his ears listen to us. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the memory of them on the earth. God's care, God's love is forever. Whatever we are going through, whatever you are going through, cry to the Lord. He knows. And you are never, never alone in your life. The next slide. This is the promise of the Lord. The Lord is near. Near does not mean near. It's near. The Lord's presence is there. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and save the crush in spirit. Remember, the Lord is near you. Whatever you're going to, broken hearted, the Lord is near you, and save the crush in spirit. Let us learn to take time to hear God, to listen to Him, to accept His words, and to obey His word for us. And I want to encourage all of us to cultivate a lifestyle of praise, worship, and a life of gratitude to our Lord. Let us trust 
in God's goodness and experience His care in our lives. Can I invite Marcus to lead us in the song of response? One prayer, I just want to pray this next slide. Three words. Simple prayer, but powerful prayer this morning. Come, Holy Spirit, come and minister to us. So even as Marcus and the team lead us in the song, I just want to pray a blessing for each one of you and encourage you if you want to receive God's strength, God's power in your life. Even as we sing, even as Marcus leads us, I encourage you to come forward. Carol and myself and some of the leaders can just pray for you. You need God's strength. Remember the storm and the eagle. Allow God to let you be that eagle that fly above the storm. I know all of us go through a lot of challenges in our life. Ask God, Lord, let me be that eagle that flies above. Let me take this opportunity to fly, to lift me higher. As you sing this song, if you want us to pray for you, Carol and myself, and some of the leaders, we just want to lay hands upon you and to pray for you.